Hi, I'm Ian Harvey, massage therapist. Today we're going to talk about jaw pain, uh, TMJ dysfunction, all this stuff that can go on with the clicking and the discomfort. This is actually a very common problem. If you ask any of your clients that have neck or headache or shoulder pain, hey, do you also have jaw pain? A lot more than you think are going to say, oh yeah, I do have that. We're going to start with an anatomy review. We'll talk about this very complex joint right here and all the muscles that surround it. Then we'll get a client on the table and I'll show you some easy myofascial techniques that are very effective at reducing this pain and the dysfunction without a lot of digging or discomfort. If you'd like to skip ahead to any section, please click on the time codes down in the description. So first of all, what is this temporomandibular joint, this TMJ? Well, let's start by talking about the mandible. The mandible is your jaw right here, and it goes up in this broad, flat surface of bone called the ramus, and the ramus has two upward projections. The more anterior projection slides under this zygomatic arch here, this cheekbone, so it goes up under here, and it makes contact with the temporalis muscle. We'll talk about that more in a second. You can feel this projection if you open your jaw wide, which I don't recommend if you've got jaw dysfunction yourself. There it is. And that's called the coronoid process. Posterior to that, we've got another projection upward of the ramus. This is called the condyle of the mandible. And this is the one that makes contact with the temporal bone, forming that temporomandibular joint. Now this is both a hinging and gliding joint. It's a very mobile joint. And that's one reason why it can get into trouble. And one reason why it's so mobile is because it's got an articular disc in here. It's this little disc of fibrocartilage that's embedded within the joint space. And it allows this joint to do all sorts of fun tricks like protrusion and sliding from side to side. And this disc actually interfaces with one of your muscles of mastication, the lateral pterygoid muscle. and it can get pulled out of place just during normal movements of mastication, otherwise known as chewing, or while you are unconsciously clenching your teeth or grinding your teeth, known as bruxism. Now, our mission isn't to fix this disc. It isn't to shove this disc back where it belongs. It's to reduce this high tension situation that's happening across this joint. And by doing that, that disc will start resuming its normal function. I find that getting this high tension situation to calm down will do the work for us. There's nothing specific that we need to do to change this joint. The two main muscles that we're going to be worrying about today are the masseter. The masseter is actually a two-headed muscle. We're not going to worry about the individual heads. It originates from this zygomatic arch and it goes down onto the entire ramus and down to the angle of the mandible. So it's a very broad insertion. And it's a very interesting and convoluted muscle. If you feel lumps and bumps and taut bands across here, don't assume that you found a trigger point. This is just a very lumpy, bumpy muscle. And we've also got the temporalis muscle. The temporalis has a very broad origin up here on the lateral skull. It covers the temporal bone and it sits in this temporal fossa. And the big broad fan of this muscle, it narrows, narrows, narrows down into a tendon that passes under that zygomatic arch and makes contact with that coronoid process. We've also got pterygoid muscles, which are less accessible and that we're going to be worrying about a little bit less today. Some of them are most easily accessed intraorally. So we would have to glove up and go into the oral cavity. And I don't tend to do those. I find that I can get a lot done just working externally, and by working with all of this fascia that all these muscles are embedded in, we can get everything to calm down without having to focus too much on any one individual muscle. By the way, in a past video, which you can see in the corner there, I've shown you how to do a really neat self myofascial release technique on your own lateral face and skull region. So if you'd like to feel what we're doing on the clients today on yourself, check out that other video. And I've got my friend Rachel here. Hi. All right, so let's go back over the anatomy here. Let's find the zygomatic arch. This is the origin of our masseter muscle. Go find the angle of the mandible. That's the bottom most portion as it goes up into 
the ramus, and finally come up above that zygomatic arch and find that temporal fossa, which extends much farther back than you might expect. So I'm still in the region of temporalis here. And while temporalis does attach to the skull, it also latches into this thick white fascia of the scalp. So anything that you do with the scalp is going to affect temporalis and everything that attaches to that fascia, so all the way down. So when I get someone in my office who has TMJ, I will start with the jaw, just because I'm going to be working on the face, and I want to start with clean hands, just so I don't cause a breakout or anything like that. That's no fun. And also, because having no oil on my hands allows me to go very slowly with this first and second myofascial technique. So what we're going to do, we're going, we're going to hook in at the bottom of the mandible, at the bottom of masseter, and we're going to be applying a few pounds of pressure inward, but mostly we're going to be applying that pressure upward, up toward the top of their skull. So curve your fingers inward, press in toward the mandible, and then drag up. And this is going to be a very slow process, depending on how broad your finger pads are. You may find that you can fit three or four fingers into this move. You don't want this to be sharp. You want this to be a nice blunt instrument. And it might not really look like I'm moving, but as the next few minutes pass, I am going to eventually make my way up all the way to the top of the head. And this might be a good time to invite your client to take some easy deep breaths. So Rachel, some easy deep breaths. And if any of this is ever too much, if it ever feels like any of this is pinching or uncomfortable, or if you feel any sort of headache up in your temple region, let me know, okay? Okay, so stay in good communication with your client. We're not searching for trigger points here, and we're not really worrying about the underlying anatomy. So right now I'm passing over the zygomatic arches, but I'm not letting up with my pressure. I'm just cruising on superiorly. And the reason I mentioned headaches in the temples is because jaw pain and TMJ dysfunction are strongly correlated with temporal headaches. If your client reports having headaches, ask them where they are. If they say they're up here, sides of my head, ask about jaw pain, even if they don't have any jaw dysfunction that they're aware of, if they've got temporal headaches, I'm definitely going to work with the jaw. Once again, try to keep this pressure distributed across your fingers so I'm not pressing in too much with any one finger. And this is fairly gentle, especially this first pass. And we're covering the breadth of temporalis. So start veering posteriorly as you get up into the temple region so that you can follow temporalis along. And then as you get further and further into the hairline, you can kind of forget about temporalis. Now we're just working with that thick white fascia that covers the skull. And going slowly with this, we're not trying to change the fascia here. We're just creating some fascial traction, which is going to have effects all the way down to the bottom of the mandible. It's going to have effects deep 
working with those pterygoids without specifically targeting them. And now for the second pass, we're going to do some recruitment on the part of the client. So Rachel, I'm going to do that again. I'd mm -hmm. like you to, just using a very tiny range of motion and going very slowly, I'd like you to open and close your jaw, maybe half an inch or an inch. Your mouth might open just a little bit. And exaggerate that just a little bit more so that you're opening your jaw just a bit more perfect. And just slowly open and close that. And notice how every time you open your mouth, that causes my fingers to move so you can control the pace of this movement. And again, if this is ever too sharp, or if there's ever any pain, please let me know, okay? Thank you. And just more easy, deep breaths. So as your client opens and closes their jaw, we're doing a moving pin and stretch. We've got the masseter and all of this lateral face fascia pinned under our fingers, and they're going to be pulling the rug out from under us as they open their jaw. And every time that happens, that will allow you to move up the face just a little bit further. And this is going to cause a bit of a different stimulus to this fascia and to the muscles embedded in it. They're going to get some new information and we're going to check in with the client about how their jaw feels after this. I'm betting it'll hang just a little <laughs> bit looser. I don't mean to influence you unduly, Rachel, <laughs> but uh, this tends to create a sensation of freedom and looseness in the jaw. Something that can frequently happen with people who are suffering from TMJ dysfunction is that they'll just have this very high tone in their masseter and in their temporalis muscles, all of the muscles of mastication. And it's unconscious. It stays like that all the time. Their teeth will always be touching and there will always be pressure. Versus after a good number of sessions and after having some discussions about maybe being mindful of their jaw position, they can get to the point where there's always a millimeter or two of space between their upper and lower teeth. Their jaw can hang just a bit instead of always being so tight. And that's a much lower stress situation for that TMJ. That disc won't be under constant pressure and it won't have that sheer force as it uh, glides. So over time, that locking that can happen and that popping will either cease or become less severe. And Rachel, you can go ahead and relax your jaw. Now, if your client were to continue that motion, that would be fine. I just don't want to make the massage too annoying by making them do that for too long. <sighs> and again, come far up into the hairline. Much farther than you would think you would need to because we're thinking myofascially, origin to insertion and beyond. Alright, and Rachel, just gently open and close your jaw, test it out, see if there is a different sensation there. Does it feel different to you at all? It does. Okay, what are you feeling? It just feels, in general, a little more relaxed. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so that's what we're going for. And I do like to give the client that opportunity to get that kinesthetic sense of that change in their jaw. So that they can feel what it's like to have a low tone, low tension environment. 
suddenly things that are things in this jaw region aren't quite so crucial in high stress. From here, you can do some strokes downward, and Rachel, see if you can allow your jaw to hang just a bit. And this can just be more to give them a sense of what it's like for that masseter to let go. And I've had my thumbs up here in the frontal region. They're not really doing anything. They're just stabilizing my hands. We can come up and kind of outline that zygomatic arch a bit. Tell the story of their anatomy. Let them know how that masseter is shaped. Let them know how that zygomatic arch is shaped. And up into the temples, we can strum across the fibers of temporalis, not trying to work out any knots or anything. You are going to feel some tight bands in here. Those aren't trigger points. That's just how temporalis is shaped. It's supposed to be stringy and twangy. And from here, we can expand our scope a bit. The SCM is tightly intertwined with all of this jaw and temporalis stuff. The SCM inserts right here at this mastoid process, which is literally millimeters away from the temporomandibular joint. So if there's inflammation, if there's tendinitis, if there's pain up here at this mastoid process, then that can be affecting the TMJ. And I've often found that trigger points in the SCM can refer up into the temples. So that's definitely something to investigate. If you'd like to see more about the SCM, check out that video that's playing in the corner there. And otherwise, just consider the entire neck, shoulder, head complex. If you can get this high tension area to become less tense, then the jaw tends to follow. If you've got a very high tension neck, upper back, chest area, then working with the jaw can help in the other direction. These are tightly interwoven, they're related. So if I've got a jaw that's dysfunctioning, I'm going to be working in the neck and shoulders. If I've got neck and shoulders that seem to very seem to be in a very high tension situation, I will be interested in the jaw. So after the massage, have a talk with your client about their jaw habits. A lot of people, I find this very commonly, a lot of people with TMJ dysfunction will do things like testing their jaw. They'll pop it repeatedly through the day because either they find it um, to reduce the pain temporarily or because they just feel compelled to. They want to see, oh, does my jaw still hurt? Yep, it does. <laughs> so they'll be doing this, you know, 20, 30, 100 times a day. So have a talk with your client about stretching their jaw and testing their jaw. Let them know that for the, the next few weeks, you'd like them to be aware of when they are doing these unnecessary jaw movements and to try to reduce them as much as possible, which will be difficult at first because not popping their jaw is going to be uncomfortable at first. Let them know that that sensation will pass, just like when you don't pop your knuckles for a while. That can be uncomfortable at first, but eventually you stop feeling that. So encourage them to stop purposely creating that um, sensation in their jaw because that's displacing the disc and it's probably creating some inflammation. Next, stretching. They probably don't need to be opening their jaw to maximum width. There are a lot of YouTube videos that are advocating jaw stretches for uh, TMJ dysfunction, but I tend to find that just by reducing this high tension situation, we don't need to be stretching those muscles out. And finally, uh, have a talk with your clients about stuff like gum chewing. They can't be chewing gum, not for the next few weeks at least. Uh, gum chewing and other repetitive motion with the jaw can definitely contribute to TMJ pain. 
All right, guys, that's it for this week. Let me know if you have any suggestions, any routines of your own, anything that you would change about this down in the comments section. Consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time. Bye.